In this lab, we're going to talk about how you discover new particles using a giant particle accelerator like the Large Hadron Collider. A few years ago, it discovered the Higgs boson, um, the particle that gives mass to other particles. It should, in the near future, a particle physicists hope, discover supersymmetric particles, or supersymmetric partners to all the existing particles. In fact, it really should have discovered them, it didn't. Uh, it's just been upgraded to have a new ener higher energy and higher luminosity, and if it doesn't discover them soon, there will be big trouble for theoretical physicists. But anyway, how do you discover new particles? Well, you use a very, very big machine. There's a many kilometer long track which accelerates the particles using superconducting magnets and then slams them together in the center of this huge space over here. The space, this is a picture taken during construction, you can see the person down the bottom. Um, is actually by now filled up with detectors. So the two particles come in, one from the hole over here and one from more or less where the camera is, smash into each other in the middle. And because the two particles are travelling at so close to the speed of light, they have much higher energy than they would normally have. And so they'll turn into a brief fireball of energy when they collide. And out of this fireball can coalesce particles much more massive than the ones that collided to begin with, including hopefully things like these new supersymmetric particles or the Higgs boson. Here's what this detector looks like now. There are actually two of these giant detectors at um, the Large Hadron Collider. This is one of them. So one beam comes in here, one beam comes in there. They smash in the middle. And as they smash, they create the new particles, like the Higgs boson. The Higgs boson will disappear so fast you're never going to see it. But what would happen is, as it moves out, it will break down into other particles, which in turn will break down into other particles. So you might get a Higgs boson here, which goes to over there, and then it breaks down into something else, and then they break down into other things, and those things smash into other things and keep on breaking down. So coming out from each collision, you get an avalanche of particles. Some of these particles you can detect, and some of them you can't. But for example, let's say you saw a particle go like this and then suddenly like that. From conservation of momentum, you know there must have been something that went off like here. So often you can work out the particles, even the ones you can't see, by looking at what happens to everything else. Uh, bear in mind the size of this whole thing, there's some people to scale. So here's the sort of track you'd expect. So you get the collision here, this is now a cross-section through, and various things, for example a photon came out here and it interacted in this electromagnetic calorimeter. There's an electron over there. The neutron travelled through here had no effect because it wasn't charged, but then out here it interacted with the hadronic calorimeter and produced a cascade of other particles. There's a neutrino that went out here and just escaped freely without being seen, but you can work out it's there by looking at the change of momentum from other things. And what you see is there are it's like an onion layer of different sorts of detectors, uh, different sizes, um, which measure different things. So what you actually get is tens of thousands of detectors, and they'll pick up, oh, something went through here, something went through there, something went through there, something went through there. Notice the path is curved. That is because the whole detector has got a huge magnetic field, so charged particles will be diverted sideways by the immense magnetic field here. Whereas uncharged particles, like the neutrons, you see the muon and the proton curved opposite ways where the neutron went straight. So that curvature, by seeing, for example, where this thing interacted with different particles, and how much it's curved can tell you something about the mass, the energy, and the charge of the particles. So what you do is you have these huge array of detectors, and whenever there's a collision in the middle, which happens millions of times a second, large numbers of these things flash, say, yes, a particle went through here, a particle went through there. You've got huge bundles of wires running from each of these detectors off to a huge array of computers that try and tie them together and work out that, yes, that this flash here was the same as that one over there, and the whole bunch of different flashes over here were all breakdown products of it. So you look at the timing. So this flash cause it must have happened a very short time after that one to be the same particle. If it happened like a millisecond later, that's much too late. It would be a different particle from the next collision that happened down here. So the enormously complicated processing ties together flash here, a bit of charge there, a bit of flash there, whatever it might be, and produces these sort of paths, and puts them into three-dimensional images like this. So here you can see one collision, which has generated a huge number of particles which have had different interactions out here, and out here, and out here, and the different detectors. And from this pattern of all the things that come out, you must have a supercomputer that will go through it all and try and work out what must have actually been created in the middle. 
and hopefully that's something like a supersymmetric particle or a Higgs boson. Hard work. And that's what this lab is about. Figuring out how you can take these sort of trails and work backwards to work out what particle is in there and trying to find evidence for a new particle.